Hello and welcome to another Pico TV production. In this episode, we will be demystifying the principles of Unifrog and exploring how it is different from Insilfrog and Electrofrog. Now, before we start, we need to understand the anatomy of turnouts. The diagram will illuminate as I describe the different components that make up a turnout. The two outer rails are called stock rail. Next is the tie bar. This is the assembly at the toe of the turnout that moves the point blades from side to side. The point blades, also known as switch rails, are the two moving rails on the turnout. Closure rails, the rails that lead from the point blades onto the frog. Check rails, the two outer rails adjacent to the stock rails that help guide the wheels and on some point work are often molded plastic and on others are nickel silver. Wing rails, two sides of the rails on from the point blades that part ways at the frog and then extend along slightly. And then we have the all important frog. The V at the point of the diversion in between the wing rails. To show the difference, I have laid out three different turnouts with the three main types of frog. First we have the insulated frog, commonly known as insil frog. As you can see, the V at the point of the diversion is made completely out of plastic. Next we have the Electro Frog. Again, you can see the V at the point of the diversion is made by the two adjoining rails and is completely made out of nickel silver. Then we have Unifrog, which is an amalgamation of the two previous versions or you could say the best of both. Rather than having a plastic frog tip, this part of the turnout is an entirely isolated section of nickel silver, separated from the rest of the rail parts by a very small sliver of plastic. Because of the simplicity of the design of the new Unifrog turnouts, they are especially popular with modelers using DCC. In a DCC configuration, all routes are live to the correct track polarities. When used on a traditional DC layout, modelers just need to be mindful of the fact that only the frog tip is isolated and the rest of the turnout is live. So isolating sections on the tracks leading out of the turnout may be necessary. However, the nickel silver frog tip can be switched to match the polarity of the root set. This is sometimes referred to as powering the frog. In order to do this, there is a wire welded to the underside of the frog tip, which in turn can be connected to a changeover switch, such as the Pico PL13, a micro switch like the PL15, or indeed the Pico Electric's PL130 Smart Switch Smart Frog Auto Detection Unit. There are no wires to cut, no sections to isolate. Everything has been made ready. Not even plastic isolating joiners are required. The polarity of the point blades remains constant, removing any risk of short circuits. Many of the Unifrog turnouts also feature one-piece point blades rather than the previous pivoted arrangement. The rollout of Unifrog will take many years to complete, as and when our tooling needs updating. So, Insilfrog and Electrofrog will also be around for a long time, but as we move over to Unifrog, the older two formats will be phased out, 
making it simpler for everyone. At a present time, we also have produced turnouts as Unifrog in the N-Scale Code 55, Double scale Bullhead Code 75, HO Code 83 and 70, HO N3 Code 70, and O Scale Set Track Systems. Plus, more will follow soon. Hopefully, this short presentation explains the facts around Unifrog and demonstrates our continuing commitments to improve our extensive popular track systems. We hope you enjoyed this demystifying Unifrog presentation and we look forward to seeing you again on another Pico TV program in the future. Thank you.